What's up, everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. Coming to you today with uh, the U.S. storm is kind of here. <laughs> Why are all these Americans quitting in the middle of the storm? Now, let's get into some facts and some numbers. Now, I wrote this really great diagram behind me, but then I realized, okay, it's not that great. Can't really see it that well from the camera. So I hopped in here and put a diagram inside PowerPoint so we can share it. Now, listen, if you don't know who I am, my name is Erica Williams. I'm the author of a smartphone millionaire book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand. Uh, I manage right now $2.7 million in assets. Some things got kicked out and some things got added in. It's it's a wild three years. It's a wild last three years. Now, part of why I'm doing this video is there are things I'm segueing to after December. <laughs> and, and I'll try as much to teach here and share in my classes and teach my students. And part of why I bring on the best people I know in the field doing it is because they've built economic moats. They're Gucci, whether <laughs> anything goes down tomorrow. They good, they good, all right? Um, and so I want to go ahead and do this one because a lot of people say, well, Erica, you know, people are quitting till they get the pay they deserve. And I want to break that down. Now, did 10,000 people walk off the job at John Deere? Yes, but they're on a strike. They didn't quit. They need that money. Did 70,000 nurses and police officers quit in New York? Yes, they didn't strike. They quit. Also, Massachusetts. What's the difference? Those nurses have been making $92,000 to $105,000 in New York City, uh, in New upper New York State, on average. That's just average. That's not some people who have lots and years and years of experience and doing overtime and all kind of stuff. Those chicks' bills are paid. And I'm going to break out the diagram to show you the difference because, see, all these people are like, well, I, these people are quitting. No, no, no. Everybody's not quitting. There's two different things happening. There's people striking, which means they need that job. Let's just come back to the table. Southwest pilots, spirit pilots, um, several other aircraft controllers, they need them jobs. They're trying to bargain. The police officers that were getting overtime, making 100K plus in New York and Massachusetts, they don't need that. I'm going to tell you why they don't need it, okay? The difference is everybody's not living paid to paycheck to paycheck. I know this drum beat over and over, just drum beat. Oh, people living paycheck to paycheck. Who's crying on the internet? Is it your uncle that has a house and, and a boat and goes on five vacations a year with his wife, sometime with his buddies to go fishing? Is he on Facebook crying? Nah, he's out at a baseball game. He's out taking his kid on travel sports. We got two, we got four or five different economies, and I'll bust it out and show you here. Two days, big old two days. What's up? There's 125 people here. Make sure you hit the like button. Again, uh, I saw Birdman comment today. It cracked me up. Birdman said, the internet gonna do what it do. You just let it be. And a lot of people don't learn to let the internet be, but they're gonna learn soon. All right, so everybody, if you can see my screen, put a one in the comments. I wanna make sure you can see this screen because I will be talking from this point for a while okay so i hope you're here i hope you can see it let me see if i can make it bigger because i know some of y'all is uh your eyeballs you need your glasses i don't know why you don't put your glasses on but go put your glasses on so you can see see here like this and then let's make it even let's knock this out the way boom made it real big let's make it a little bit more bigger there a oh, little bit a little bit there we go so everybody should be able to see, right? If you can't see, you need to let me know. If you can't, if you got to get, go get your glasses out the bathroom, let me know, okay? Now let me make it even bigger, okay? Make it real big. All right, now what are we looking at here? This is the diagram, and I'm going to break it down. What is happening, and why do you hear what you hear when you're online, okay? There's 142 people here. What's up? Make it bigger. Does it need to be bigger than this, y'all? Uh, let me know if I need to make it bigger than this. Uh, this might be a little hard to make it bigger than this at this point. I'm messing with it, but it might be hard. Uh, make sure you got your glasses on, everybody. Put your glasses on. Uh-oh. Let me go like this. Yeah. How about that? Okay. So, all right. So, here we go. Now, we're looking at the screen. You're like, okay, what's going on? 40K and under, I call it the sh hit the fan. <laughs> And emergencies. I call it hit the fan emergencies. I call it poverty. I call it the scam culture. I call it West Virginia living. 
I call it meth problems. I call it uh, the Badlands. I call it Rust Belt. Now, why am I saying this? 40K and under is where we're hearing all of these hit dogs holler. When people talk about, well, single moms is going to have a hard time out here in America. They're talking about single moms who make 40K and under and live in rough parts of Philadelphia, live in rough parts of, of upper states. You know, I keep meeting countless black women who literally just picked up and left Chicago with the clothes in their car and took their kids out of Chicago to Georgia, Alabama, Florida. You know, the old saying, I'm going to go see, stay down south with my cousins, right? Um, why are they doing that? Oops, sorry about that. Whoops, 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 camera's acting up. Hold on. They know the possibility. Let me know if y'all can hear me. Put a one in the comments if you can hear me. Oh, it's tripping today. All right. So they know the possibility of the, of their child making it in Chicago are so low. And they know if they have one emergency, they is that shit hits the fan. They done. They're out the game. Now, this is the people people are complaining about. They're saying, oh, you know, uh, this person's broke or whatever. Or these people are going to have um, these people are going to have. Uh, problems. These single mom is going to have the problems. These are the people they're talking about. These are the women they're talking about. The women they make 40K and under, they got two, three kids at the house. And they really don't have a great support strong. Right? These are the women they're talking about, just to make it very, very clear. But there's a lot of men in the 40K and under as well. If we look at the charts, and I'm going to see if I can pull that one up too, the average single man is sitting at like 35,000 to 40,000. The average woman Single or married, nine times out of 10 is sitting at that $33,000 to $40,000 mark. That's why when I tell you 80 million Americans make under $30,500 a year, these people trying to convince you that this man going to be all right. 70% of people that are homeless are men. Let me say that again. 70% of people, while we are in good times, while winter is not here yet, are men. Men. Homeless. OK, there was an article came out in time. I'll show it here. It said never in, in American history have we had more men single than ever. Now, people in the article are like, well, what does it matter that men are single? They can be single. The article said mathematically it's almost impossible. You have so many more women than men in America for this many men to be single. Sums up. Something's up. If you don't like the stats that are here, go Google it. How many people are registering to be homeless? Okay. Apollo, how about this? I don't even like your attitude. You going if you come in my classroom, blocked. You're blocked. Have a great afternoon. You're blocked. Have a great day. I'm done already. All right. So next, why am I calling it the 40K under? If they have an emergency, um, we've watched some people's channels where they're written out cars, Torino app, and they have these people who rent their cars and tear them up. Can't have any gas money, struggling, Uber eating, door jashing just to survive. They're in a, 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 a just a habit of survival. Like they're not even in it, like making good money. Okay. There you go. There you go. Um, Y'all think I'm playing today. I don't have time. I'll block everybody in this mug. I don't care. Uh, 30K plus 30K would be 60K. That's right. Okay. I, I just don't have time today. Y'all y'all argue with me and you know all I do is read because I'm a nerd. So I know what I'm talking about. Go Google a stat on your own time. Now, we can go on and on and on about the abandonment class. The abandonment class is in the book, Disintra Dis uh, The Disintegration of Black America. But it also is the same in Dear White People, The Destruction of White America. Um, Pat Buchanan wrote this book. Several people wrote this book. <laughs> I'll block the whole chat. Y'all don't even know. I'll act up up in here. Uh, <laughs> and what I tell you is they are suffering on that side, too. That's why I put Rest Belt. That's why I put West Virginia. You go to some of them towns, you got to have a pew, pew, pew on your hip because it's like the walking dead outside. It's like, a, you know. Food stamp Wednesday. You know, I told you about my friend when they trained in East Texas. They said, look, baby, don't go to the Walmart on uh, first. Because she, let's just go there. She black. She training out there. And East, East Texas is historically known to be racist. So she like, I'm, a, I'm the law. I go to the store whenever I want to. I got a gun on my hip. Well, she went out to the Walmart and she saw toothless 
U-turn, hillbillies, overalls, scary, overweight people in scooters. She was like, this is insane. And this is in Texas, in the good times, okay? All right? So again, this is why I'm telling you, when we talk about, you know, the scamming, and here's a, here's a version of scamming, because people think scamming is Jay Morris and all these other people and, and all this other stuff. To me, scamming and the definition of scamming is when these people go to Miami, come back, and then sit there and go, oh, I didn't make any credit card purchases. I've been here all weekend. And then the bank gives them a new debit card and, and refunds, refunds all the money. These dummies don't even know to get a credit card and do this silly mess. They're doing it with debit cards. This is where I have people do chargebacks on my website, several people I know websites. And you know what we do? We block them. We block them people and we share their names. Hey, if you get anybody buying this course, she, she, she does chargebacks. Be careful. Oh, trust me. There's a database going around in our community of who does that stuff. Because that's a scam. And they are living like that because they're, they want to live at 80000 a year, but they only got forty. They want to live. They want to go to Miami and spend a thousand for the weekend. But if they spend that thousand, they ain't got rent. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You saw the women go to Atlanta for the basketball weekend and was sleeping in U-Hauls. You saw them down there didn't have no way to get home. You saw the strippers who flew down there. I mean, I literally was like, did these strippers get here on their own free will? Let's call some pimps, right? So look, that 40K, this is the this is the um, Atlanta, what's that thing called? Atlanta Scoop? This 40K and under is the, is the uh, man, the world stars, right? This is the crate challenge, folk. Now, y'all be like, Erica, that's disrespectful to people make 40K. If you live in middle of nowhere, Ohio, and you got a family, and you in a house, and you got two cars off 40K, God bless you. But, but in, in, in Charlotte, that ain't working. In Miami, in Atlanta, in uh, Richmond, Virginia, in uh, D.C., in, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of big cities, Dallas. Houston, you can get away with a little bit. In California, 40K ain't doing that. It ain't doing that. Okay? So now let's go on to the next one. This is who you hear screaming on the internet. The educated broke, right? I'm going to be careful here because I'm going to be stepping on her toes. Okay? Hit dog taller. 40K to 80K, but I'll also include 100K. Now, in the community section, you'll see it as 130 comments because y'all be getting in y'all feelings. I put... Learn how to communicate with your high value man, or even if you're dating a UPS driver named Jerome. We all know UPS drivers make 80 to 100K a year. But immediately, instead of seeing this as a sarcasm of just a blue collar man versus a white collar man, people in the chat are like, they ain't broke, Erica. They not broke. They, they UPS drivers. They got money. They UPS drivers. Like, y'all were losing y'all. I was like, Jesus, should I delete the post? Good gracious, y'all act like I, I was outside hitting UPS men in their head. And I've said several times on this channel, you can be a UPS driver, own a house, and have a car, and be good. We said that. That's how emotionally tinderbox sensitive people are when you start talking about blue collar versus white collar. I've already made it very clear. We're in the fourth turning. What is the fourth turning? We'll go over this more in depth, but fourth turning is every, every, every turning, we're in the fourth one, you have to repair, rebuild societies. That's why when y'all see me in Detroit, people are like, oh, why would you invest there? Every society has to rebuild, repair. Infrastructure bills, what you hear Joe Biden talk about this infrastructure bill, you will hear infrastructure bill every two years from our whoever our president is. They'll have to. They'll have to because we're in the fourth turning. Now, what's the biggest problem about the fourth turning? Uh, there's somebody in one of my classes, they're talking about their whole um, business is aiming at seasonal workers. I think it's a, it's a marvelous ideal. She needs to make a ton of money aiming at seasonal workers. Season workers are what we call older workers. Because in the fourth turning, every time there's a fourth turning, this is what happens. The people who can serve and have the knowledge are too old to serve. Now, let me, let me break that down again. Um, they have, you know, every time you turn on news, they'll have somebody who's from the greatest generation or a war II veteran and they a hundred years old, 90 years old. They got some Tuskegee airmen still out there. They 94 years old. They still driving cars, still doing stuff, still smoking cigars on their front porch. You got a lot of these old, steady, as, as strong as a rock folk still alive. And they have a wealth of knowledge, but they're too old to serve. Now, 
there's just another thing that's happening. If you look at the average age of construction workers, the average age of handyman, the average age of a plumber, I think it's 41, but every other category, the average age of the man in that skill is 65. 55 or 65. It depends on which one it is. If you pick farmers, it's 65. If you pick construction, it's 57. So all these men, and I'm being careful because you're going to be like, well, 55 ain't an old man. Yes, honey, you're old. You're not 25. You're 55. Nothing wrong with that. Live your life. Black don't crack. You can be strong at 55. That's not what I'm saying right now. What I'm saying is at 55, do you want to go train 100 young men to do what you do? Nah, you just want to do your little bit of handyman work and go home. You want to do your plumbing and go home. So the people that have the skills in the fourth turning are too old to serve. Do you get my point? What I'm trying to say? Okay, put a one if you get what I'm trying to say. If you don't, I, you offend it. That's on you. Now back to the number: forty k to eighty k, a hundred k, depending on the city or state you're in. Um, that is a, uh, a, a interesting number, depending. On, but I call it the float. I call it the slide. I call it the complaining. Uh, it's when we say that girl's got first world problems. When you see a mom, uh, her she married and they drive in Tahoes and they live in the suburbs and then they complain about school and they got to pay attention to the kids homework or um, they on the Internet. Look, prime example, I'm going to show you this one. They on the Internet complain about who pays for all the bills, who pays for the Internet, who pays for the kids sports. Right. Uh, there was a man in somebody's channel complaining about his wife uh, went home from work. And he said, well, it's been good. It's been bad. She wants me to pay for all these things. Well, sir, sir, come on, sir. She went home. If she went home, that means y'all are down in income. OK, if your son's been doing travel sports or travel hockey, whatever his son did in the comment section. If your son's been doing this travel baseball, let's just say baseball for cigar. And we all know travel baseball is probably about three to ten thousand per semester. OK, that you sign your kid up for that. Plus, you driving and going to the games and all the stuff and traveling long distance. If you couldn't afford an extra three thousand five hundred, y'all was already at the edge of uh, of the strain. Y'all was already straining. Y'all already one uh one accident from a bad time, right? Okay, my friend used to say this: if you if, if the wife has to work, she's subsidizing the family. That's what the word, if you go back and actually read articles from 1960s, when they talk about, uh, and 70s talking about women entering the workforce, they called it subsidizing the family. See, men don't like that word, but that what the word is. If your husband cannot take care of you and the family off his income, that means the wife had to go into the workforce and subsidize the family. That's the word. Okay. So I call that 40K to 80K to 100K. It's the slide. It's the float. It's the start complaining. It's the first world problems. It's the complaining about the internet, right? I had a friend come back uh, from LA and she lived with her mom because she she had a roommate situation in LA. Well, all the roommates got married except for her. And she one thing happened. She lost her car and she had to go back home to North Carolina. And her complaints every day on Facebook were like, oh my God, the internet's so slow. The, like just everything she was complaining about was first world problems. So when people sit here and talk about, oh, these single moms, man, they're going to be in trouble. No, no, no. If they're in the float, if they're in the slide, these are the women who already got a house and they'll move a couple cousins in. They'll move another mother with her children in. They'll be in that float, the edge of the float. OK, hope that made sense. Uh, but yeah, the, co the complaining, the hey, I went to college, you know, and I'm going to homecoming. Those people got a little bit of extra and they chilling. All right. Call it the float or call it the slide, right? They're, they're the guy or girl who, the husband and wife, well, they got a boat in the yard. They got some jet skis, but they complain about the cost of everything, you know, because they're in the dead up to their eyeballs. All right. So <laughs> I hope everybody got that. 80K to 250K. Now, what is that group called? I call it freedom. I call it options. I call it travel nurses. I call it high skill level, marketing, salesmen, small business. I have several friends who have. They're an independent plumber, whoever you want to label that. And their business makes half a million a year. Do they take home half a million a year? No. That's why people always say, well, the average business owner, he takes home less than 80K a year. Is old boy going to say I take home half a million? No, because he get taxed out the yang. He going to write off every single thing. He going to write off employees. He going to write off staff. He going to write off things. I made a video a couple of days ago. I released it called A Million's Not What You Think. 
if the average AC repair is six to eight thousand dollars and you do 200 homes a year, uh, you already made a mill. You made a one point some mill. But that's not gangbusters, right? Once you do taxes, once you pay payroll, once you pay staff, once you pay marketing, that's not gangbusters. But you can sit in that 250. OK, a lot of tech people sitting in these high numbers. They're able to do what? Pay off debt. Right. I sat inside of a, a workshop and I sat inside of a seminar and both people in those two things, when there were two different times, they were like, oh, yeah, you just put 10 to 10 to uh, 20 K a year away a year. Yeah. 10, and the person said 15 to 30 K a year. And I was like, this is so financially tone deaf because the average American don't got 15 to 30 K a year. OK. Right. So, again, when they start trying to try to tell you, oh, you know, they got to really listen. Where are they at on this economic scale and what they're complaining about? Does it make sense? OK. So, again, you, when I keep telling you that you will continue to see throughout this whole cycle. Uh, right. Yesterday, we had Eric Coffee on. He talked about how he made all that money. And then all of a sudden he had something bad go on. And he built an economic moat around himself. What's an economic moat? Crypto, silver, gold, digital real estate, actual real estate, um, businesses, skills. Build a moat around your situation because if you go bankrupt or you go down, you just go, hey, I can come back in a year or two. That's not that bad. Right. So, again, they call that the freedom class. Now, the 250 to two million a year. And I'm going to show you an art. I'm going to show you a thing in a second here uh, just to uh, make sure it's very clear. Everybody gets what I'm trying to say here. Um, that's New Yorkers. That's California. That's small business owners. That's online business. That's certain businesses. Right. Uh, and and the, the two to five million. That's another level. They're separate because you can meet somebody who has a two million dollar business and they only took home two hundred thousand. I've seen it happen often. Right. So on paper, you know, Eric was like, every year I, I do two million for the past decade on average, two million a year. Well, he can do two million a year and he's got a nice house in Florida, a boat in Florida, or some things in Florida. But he's not over there out there gangbusters. He's not in Saudi Arabia every other weekend. He's not with his own private jet. You know what I'm saying? So, again, these are numbers that are important and that you're going to see. That's why when people say, oh, I'm a millionaire or I made a million in my course or I sold a million of this. I go, OK, well, what was the net? How much did you spend on marketing? How much you spend for this and that? That's why I ask that often because I know the difference because I'm actually in business. And when I show people in the class tomorrow, digital real estate, these are all the different things that make up digital real estate. Here's how we make them. Here's how we create them. And here's why we create them, because we're creating a moat around ourselves. That's why I put this course together, because I'm telling you the moat, you want to create it now. Because in next year, you're going to have these people who are like, look, I survived. You know, like I survived 2020, but I'm dragging my legs behind me and I'm willing to sell my house for nothing just to get rid of it. I'm willing to sell this truck. I'm willing to sell this. I'm willing to sell these parts. I'm willing to sell this land. I'm willing to sell all the shit I got just so I can make it so I can breathe. That's why you got so many baby boomers willing to sell their business because 2020 was so hard. Now they're like, damn, just to get back to comfortable, we're going to have to spend more money on marketing. We're going to have to have, hire more staff. I just don't want to do that. I'm 65. I want to take some money and ride off into the sunset. This will be a very common thing coming up. OK, so did everybody get this. I hope everybody got this. I'm going to show something else. I want to show. OK, I'm show something else. Hey, what's up, everybody? OK, let me share my screen here. I'm purposely antagonizing y'all with this. Uh, thing here so ignore it okay all right so this is the book um felix let me make sure i say his name right he he died because he was partying too hard here it is how to get rich one of the world's greatest entrepreneurs shares his secrets it is felix dennis uh he rich rich okay uh and he's also dead okay he partied a little too hard ate too much now here's this thing i i when i read this and this is the British version. There's an English version that's better. When I read this, it, it like hit something for me. It, and I'm going to make it bigger here. Let me see. Can everybody see this? Let me know if y'all can see this in the chat. If you can't see it, like, let me know. Now, this is from the book. This is page like 23. Table two. Now, he's got another one I'll show you, but this one is really important. Wealth measured by total assets. True net worth. He said, if, if, if everything happened and you're you're not about to die and you're prepared to take some cash out and assets. And again, 
you know, live again, however you want to talk about it. One to two million in assets is comfortable poor. Let me say that again. One to two million in, in assets. And this is in pounds, but we're just going to say dollars for sake of argument. One to two million dollars in assets is comfortably poor. How many people in the chat know somebody who lives in, in California or New York and they got a house and it's worth a million, right? Like, it don't mean they got a million, but it means it's worth a million. Talk to me. Anybody in the chat, talk to me. People come complacent and stuck. Oh, yeah, people do. Brave new world. That's right. Marriage is not a priority. Um, you know, I don't think it's that it's not a priority. If you have a non-cooperative partner that's destructive, I mean, again, there's this old saying, you can you can never bring someone up, right, if they don't want to come up. But somebody bad can bring you down. So what happens is a lot of these young ladies pick somebody for silly reasons. I don't know why their reasons are silly. And then when they wake up out of the fog of that is La La Land, that these kids have to eat food, bills have to be paid, and they can't go off to Miami every couple of weekends, then all of a sudden they go, holy crap, I need somebody serious. And then they get mad, right? Why do they get mad? Because they realize I have a non-serious person here. Now, all of us will say, well, that's not my problem. Marry that non-serious person and, and, and whatever happens to you happens to you. Well, we have a society where it's allowed them to say, well, I don't want to tie myself to that man. And that's what they do. So. I, I'm serious. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. You're not going back and forth. Uh, no, no, thank you. If you don't like it, you can leave. It's just that's just where we are at this point. Okay. Uh, let me see. All right, next one. Okay. Yeah, winners can. So again, two million to five million assets is comfortably off. What does that mean? You ever meet people who are retired and they got a house and they got a Cadillac paid off and they got a little bit of money? They're comfortably off, right? Right? Five million to 15 million. This is the comfortably wealthy. Now, when I was in Detroit, and, and y'all see in that one video that shows up soon, um, where we're driving this neighborhood, and these houses are massive. And they're like, oh, yeah, these are million dollar homes. I said, yeah, but to stay here because they're so big and the gas bills and the heating bills, these people have rentals. Oh, probably not. No, no, honey, they have rentals. They have rentals. They have some type of asset that keeps paying them on recurring payments because in order to live this way, they would need that. That's why when I talked about JLo having that New York house, she probably realized, OK, I need to sell this thing. It's I bought it for 20, 20 million, but it's requiring at least a million a year to keep it functioning in taxes and property taxes. Again, five to 15 million in assets is comfortably wealthy. Right. 15 million to 40 million is the lesser rich. I want y'all to really see these numbers, okay? 40 million to 75 million is the comfortably rich, okay? The 75 million to 100 million is the rich. 100 million to 200 million is the seriously rich. The 200 million to 400 million is the truly rich. And the 400 million to 900, which basically is a billionaire, is the filthy rich, right? And there's a whole series on, on CNBC uh, of this. But I love when I read this because it just changed for me. When I thought about, um, hey, man, I'm doing pretty good. I made this much money and I can go uh, goof off and go to music concerts and travel whenever I want. And then something happened. And I was like, but I can't just go walk up and buy a hundred thousand dollar car. I just can't walk up and buy a three hundred dollar house, three hundred thousand dollar house cash. I can't just walk up and buy this business for a million dollars and have a payment plan. And don't care. These are when you start realizing the difference between having some money comfortably and actually being wealthy and rich. Now, a lot of people say, well, most men aren't going to do this, Erica. Most women aren't going to be rich. I'm not saying that. What I'm telling you is pay attention to the numbers you're arguing about. Everybody ain't going to make six figures. 90% of Americans don't make six figures. And that's true. But the difference is once you get up high, is the sky's the limit. You just keep buying assets. You just keep growing. See, what happens is people get comfortably poor in bad neighborhoods and bad situations and that they realize if they change, they'll have to actually really change and change friends and change where they go on vacation and where they carry themselves and how they conduct themselves. That's why you have people make a bunch of money and lose it because they're not comfortable. <coughs> also, they didn't know how to make more money. 
<clears throat> I'm glad you took the advice, man. <clears throat> I apologize for being in y'all ear. Thank you. Thank you. Velvet Rose, I'm telling you, all these people turn around and try to switch their debit cards and, and turn around and, and get chargebacks. The chargeback is huge. The chargeback industry is huge. It's so huge that Grant Cardone's brother, twin brother, has a company that specializes in fighting chargebacks. Makes millions of dollars. <coughs> The best gift black folks can give themselves would be coding software, a laptop, or a desktop and start a business. See, this is where I tell you. And people try to fight me about, um, hold on one second, y'all. Okay, do we make it back? Can y'all hear me? Is my audio okay? Oh no. Hello, hello, can you hear me? All right, there we go. We're back. We're back, baby. Back. Back in the New York. All right, 466 people here. Hit the like button for 31 minutes in. Again, okay. when we talk about laptops on here, people go, well, people can't buy laptops, Erica. We show you countless times where laptops are $200 or less. Like, they can't make laptops any cheaper than they're making them right now. It's a choice. Atlanta, listen, I'm telling you. Vegas, yeah, Vegas has a high number of identity theft, people gambling, all kind of crazy card company. Okay. Definitely not in Richmond. Just telling you, again. So the people we hear, what we call the, what uh, I think someone said the unwashed masses, <laughs> I, was, I will give him credit for that. He did say unwashed masses, is these people really honestly don't have a clue what's going on. And so they're quitting their job like, yeah, I'm going to quit, man. I'm going to get a different job, man. But the people who striked are in a different mindset. See, they striked for a compromise. The people who quit their job, I'll just go get another. I'm not working fast food. I'm better than that. These will be the same people. November, December, talking about how they can't buy Christmas gifts and food is so expensive and they need more. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, this is what's going on. I'm in Cleveland and Detroit markets and they're like, oh, we can't have all these evictions, but they can. You know why? The government just opened up a bevy of Section 8 in Cleveland and Detroit. A ton of it. It's been under the radar. Nobody's talking about it. And you know why? Because they know these evictions are coming. They can't have a bunch of homeless people all on the street. So the government's like, all right, all right, look, we'll pay the section eight. Dang. We'll pay the section eight. So you have people who are invested in these markets and they go, okay, well, put my tennis out today and pay them. I'll go get section eight and get paid every month. This is what will happen. You'll have more people on section eight than ever. Okay. Again. <clears throat> It's always going to be a struggle and segment of society they're, they're talking to, guinea pig of society, and then they'll always be the ones that are going to adjust. Listen, who's still paying for those football tickets? Step, football game tickets are not cheap. And then the parking, and then getting there, and then the food, and then the beverages and the drinks. These stadiums are packed, right? We were joking about when <laughs> we joked about the stimmy money where everybody was in Florida, Miami, goofing off. Look at the stadiums right now. Look at the music concerts. It's 105% back. Look at Lollapalooza in Chicago. Look how packed it was. There are certain segments of our society, they're going on about their business. There you go. Again, learn and unlearn. Uh, Derek Two Grace came up with that. I ain't going to steal it. Homeless is off the hook. Right. So, again, and I'm going to be careful with the word homeless. You know, this guy said, if you're renting, you're homeless. I ain't going to go that far. I will say if you're in van life, if you're in an RV, which I see a ton more in Austin every day now, and that is your home, you technically are homeless. You're in a transitional home moment. There you go. Yeah, they out there acting a while. Listen, and again, what you're going to see is an increase in when we say the 40K and under, and I'm, I'm, I hate to just press you, but you're going to see this increase of people stealing packages off porches, 
people doing home break-ins, people taking everything out of somebody's house, people stealing copper, people stealing parts, people stealing cars, this, this petty underworld crime. When this person literally could take a laptop and sit in front of YouTube for five hours and learn how to freaking code or do technical writing or do some small asset data entry and get paid a thousand bucks a week. You know what I mean? So again, the, this is what you're going to start seeing. Okay. This is why they're like, all these men are dropping out of college because let's just be honest. It used to be with his, Hispanic and black children out of high school. If they, if you couldn't say, Hey, this is how this is going to make money. They didn't want to do it. Now you have white men and, and other men going to college. Go, well, why am I going to college? Can I get paid next week? If I leave here? No, then I'm not going to go. It's a very simple answer. It's a very simple answer. Uh, a lot of these folks, when I was at East Carolina, a lot of men flunked and then they went to the community college and then they were working a job. So the girl would bring him around like, oh, this is my boyfriend. They're like, oh, he go to ECU? No, he go to community college, but he got a job. And we, and people kind of giggled, but I'm like, that's the key part. He has a job. He's able to take care of himself and still stay in the ECU area. So I love how you talk to the real, watching all day. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Weather's good. That's right. Same thing in Hawaii. You're going to have homeless. Listen, there are homeless people. There are YouTubers that have been homeless. That's what I'm Listen. So, again, again, we have segments of society. Segments of society. So Signet Jewelers just recorded record profits with wedding rings. So is it interesting? Who's getting married? Your thoughts. Now, if you listen to uh, the Chili Bean Society of YouTube, the, the Couch Surfers Society, the I'm going to go uh, sleep with Transformers Overseas Society in our YouTube here, they have you believe nobody and their mama get married ever, ever, ever. No one's getting married. That's crazy. You go to Instagram. You go to TikTok. You go to LinkedIn. All them people you run into are married, okay? Um, they're going to have more people go to marriage. And some of the some of the chili bean community has said there will be more marriages. I'll give them credit for that. Several of them have said it. It'll be because dudes financially can't afford it. They got to get married because they're going to live with these women. This is going to happen. This will happen because it will economically be the most sensible thing. It, it just won't make no sense no other way. You making 30, I'm making 30 shit. We might as well just stick together. There's that song, Angie, Angie Stone. What's her name? Let us see has. We're going to stay together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Because economically, that's the best thing for us. So, yes, I do believe if I look up the article on Signet Juniors having a record profit year, I would not be surprised. I would check out jeweler companies around May and December. Why? Because masses of people graduate college and they just they just get married. <laughs> They just have waves of marriages coming out of college. This is why this article started up all this, stirred up all this mess about marriage. Because if you don't have all these guys at school and they don't think the next step is to get married, what happens to our society, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Listen, Floyd, thank you for sharing. He said he's 39 and he can tell his body ain't like he used to be when he's 25. It just, it just is what it is. It is what it is. You know, here's the thing. They cleared them out, but these people come right back. Right. Carjacking. I mean, I just saw a, a news article in California where they were the news camera was filming cars and people literally put a sign on their window. Please don't break in my car. I don't have nothing in it. Please don't break the window. I don't have nothing. Please don't. And this is where I tell you uh, the the 40K to 100K a year folks who live in a semi nice neighborhood and they just leave their cars unlocked. This will happen a lot more. The car break ins um, here in Hutto. Uh, f further north of us, which has always been considered a safe area, they had 94 cars break in. They literally had a, a gang of six dudes in a in a in a in a, one of those damn van life vans driving around, hop out, hop out, break into the cars because guess what? People would just leave them unlocked. They're in the suburbs. They just left their glove clubs in the car. They left their laptop in the car. They left their other stuff in the car. Oops, they forgot. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I have been very silly at times and left my wallet and my gun, all kind of stuff in the car. And I was like, girl, what's wrong with you? Girl, you better get your stuff out the car. I, I just forget you're in a gated community, but it ain't that safe. Go get your stuff out the car. So these people living in the suburbs think, oh, I'm even more safe. 
And so then that's what happens to them. So again, lots of car break-ins are going to happen. Girl, I, Floyd, that's too much. I can't even read all that. That's crazy. I, I listen. And so again, when people say, why am I doing these videos about government contracting? Or, aren't you angry at Joe Biden and all this other silly stuff? Listen to me. Go get the money. If you got a business and you can go, you can make money off the federal government, why let these, <laughs> I'm going to be careful. When I was filling out my documents and I had to turn in my stuff to, for Native American enrollment, I had to show them, hey, I'm Native American enrolled, right? They were like, oh, send us, send us your travel card. Take a picture of your ID too. Because they have so many, let's just go there, white people saying they're Native, never provide any documentation. And they were getting all these government contracts and then they had to go back and fix it. Well, we got to give this contract away or pay it away. Whoops. Because nobody was checking. And when I saw that, I said, oh, my God, my personal trainer's first time even trying. He got three government contracts this year. I'm not saying that it's it's shooting fish in a barrel. But a lot of you, instead of sitting here trying to negotiate and haggle and, oh, you know, is this worth nine hundred dollars? Go get money from the government. They already took it from us in taxes. They've already allotted it out to be paid. Make it make sense. Make it easy for yourself. I will tell you what, Austin, Texas, and parts of Texas are suing uh, New York health care system because they basically gave people a one-way bus ticket from New York to out Texas. And the people get off the bus and they're here. And they, they keep the, the, the homeless people, listen, say what you will about the homeless, they keep the ticket stub and they ID and they show them, like, I'm from New York. And the people are like, well, how'd you get here? This is how I got here. So a lot of that's happening. Um, you'll see more of that. <laughs> You'll see a lot of California people giving them tickets to somewhere. I'm in the flow again. Also, this is the thing. This is why I'm teaching a digital real estate course. You cannot always get a second job. Some people have children. Some people have husbands that are like, you better be home at five. I mean, it is what it is. People have different relationships. The digital real estate side of things, I've actually watched. I'm going to just go there. One of the white friends I know, beautiful woman, make six figures. Mommy blogging. Wasn't even taking it serious, just was killing it, right? One of them did um, some kind of facial healthcare stuff. And, and I'm gonna break it down inside the class of like healthcare and how you write for different things. But the reason I'm doing this and teaching the class is because people are searching for these answers. Last night, I needed to know how to make these enchilada dinner. And I ain't do good. I just, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't cook well. It didn't go right. But I watched, I read two recipes. I went to two blogs. I went to a YouTube video and I liked that video. So I watched another video. I said, I just spent an hour looking up enchiladas and every single page had all these kind of links and more links and native ads playing on them and, and tabula ads paying on them. Like I was like, oh my gosh, all these people getting paid. That enchilada recipe video had 6 million views on it. I wanted to go look up that woman's social media, her social blade. Because I was like, girl, you got to be picking paid. Six million people watching you put together these bland enchiladas because they were bland. She made some bland looking enchiladas. Uh, the digital real estate's out there, y'all. Um, It's a combination. Women work harder to prove that they can make it and they're working hard and they're doing 60 hour work hours and doing all this stuff, wearing themselves out. That's ridiculous. Oh, man, y'all got so many comments to skipping. Okay. Uh, my two aunts live together in L.A. in a million-dollar house in Inglewood. There you go. It's valued at a million. They're, are they are they rich? No, but they're comfortable, right? There you go. There you go. Okay, King Heart, do you need? All my stories are anecdotal and they're incidental. And every day I come and show you page after page, stat after stat, article after article. And yet you come and you complain. You don't go over to these men channels when they talk about these women they hook it up with in their imaginary minds and it's anecdotal. Just for that, King Heart, you know what we got to do, right? We're not going to block you, but we're going to put you in timeout. All right. Have a good day. Sit your timeout in there. Go ahead and take a timeout. Think about it. When I worked at Cable Tech, I walked into million dollar houses in Dallas and seen air mattresses and blankets scattered throughout the house with nice cars parked off out Floyd. I would not even be surprised. I've heard the same thing from people that clean carpets. I've heard the same thing from people who had to um, install stuff in houses where the house is beautiful. Ain't shit inside. 
Nick Taylor, Nick Taylor, where were you today? Nick Taylor, I went off on some rednecks today and I almost had to take my pew 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 out. And I said, let me call Nick Taylor. I know a tow truck, man. I ain't got to put up with this. And then I had to calm down. I'd go in there and I, I had to, I, I sent my white worker that works for me. I said, go in there and tell them that I'm coming. And he went in there and he calmed them down. Now, by the time I got in there, everybody was calm. But I called Nick Taylor because I was like, Nick Taylor called me. I, I am in distress. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, I have some of the YouTubers' numbers, not everybody's numbers, some people who are closer in Texas than others. The tragically poor, yes. Tragically poor, is, 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 I'm telling you, it's, again, I'm. it's a whole thing in there where, oh, you know, my baby daddy. Listen, uh, one girl was saying, husband, baby daddy, whatever she want to call him, you know, black people always say they engaged. He had warrants. Um. They drive into the hospital to take deliver the baby, and he get arrested, and they impound the car. The woman's in the car. Why can't she just drive the car? Oh, because she's in labor, okay, and they're going to the hospital. So police don't care, right? They don't care. And so you have to understand every bit of these stories that I'm telling you that these things happen every day, and it don't matter because – You've chosen that person, and now you're in this tragically poor situation where y'all really never get ahead. It's always an emergency. It's always a bad decision. You think know I'm saying? So working but tragically poor, yes, Nick Taylor, that is a category. And there's 575 people here. Hit the like button. Um, I try to give y'all the best. The best. It's really not. <laughs> it's not a lot of like 100K, y'all, like. It's not. And then you pay. Listen, we'll get in another conversation on that. So it, it can be. It, it, now, if you're in California, New York, listen, anybody in the chat from California, New York, tell me what 100K is in California, New York. You qualify for low income housing in California with 100K. Bingo. A lot of people inherited those homes, that part. Oh, let me see. Yep. Yep. And that to me is insane. It's an apartment. See, these DC developers are are targeting someone from New York who wants to get out of the price of New York, but still want to charge them arm leg. There you go. I make 90, she makes 55. Live off the 55, invest the 90. Buy a house every two years. I'm telling you, it's really, it's that simple of a game plan. But people have to get in, get in it together, agree, and do it. I'm t let me tell you something. If if and, I, and this is horrible, but if every black man that got shot, if they all had million dollar life insurance policies, the insurance lobbies would would literally send attorneys. I mean, they would sick after the police unions. And I mean this. Like I've heard this so many times. I thought it was funny at first, but then I'm like, no, that's really true. If you count the twenty seven thousand, I think it's like. It's like 27,000 a year or something. It's like a really ridiculous high number of black men and also um, just men in general get shot by the police. White men, Hispanic men. If every single one of them men had a million dollar policy, these insurance companies would be like, hey, you y'all better stop. Y'all better use tasers. We, we would have complete change in two years because the amount of policies they'd have to pay out, they'd be they'd be almost bankrupt. There you go. Yep. Gamblers. Gamblers. There you go. 350. That 350. 350. Lenar Technologies. The scammers are. They're keeping cybersecurity IT businesses booming. The break-ins are going to skyrocket. They are, unfortunately. That's why the pew pew pews. Uh, black people getting pew 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 went through the roof during Donald Trump administration. And then, and you know, when Obama was in, it went the other way. Through the roof. Gun sales. Obama was our best gun sales president ever. He won't going to do nothing with his nice suits on, but y'all was scared. Trump buying in there now and people buying guns because of safety, right? <laughs> when the lockdown first occurred, all these people lined up to go buy guns. All these people in Austin, these liberal people like, oh, my God, uh, we're, we're getting locked down. It's a, it, Hey, you can do it. The Great Unwashed. That is, I'm going to actually look that book up. The Great Unwashed. Nick Taylor, since you're in the chat, would you want to train 10 young men with no skill 
how to tow trucks and how to how to run businesses. I mean, you've been doing it for years. People don't talk about that. Life and death of King John, the unwashed. Boy, I tell you, if you went back to England during those times, it would smell awful. Just awful. You might faint from the stain. Sold out shows, yeah. There you go, Jarvis people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Jarvis just said, people with no high school education feel as though they are above living in a trailer here in Mississippi. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. <clears throat> I can't. I can't. Y'all, I can't. <laughs> Jarvis, Jarvis gets the comment of the day. <laughs> can't even be serious. I apologize. Instructional design too. Listen, yes, there is a young lady. We're advertising her on here talking about instructional design. We'll post it again on free on the community wall tonight. Let me put a little note so y'all can see. They are. They're locking up a lot of stuff. Uh, California is closing a bunch of CVSs. They said they're done. They can't do it. Dang, I bought the course. I'm a six-figure year trucker and I hate it. Listen, this is the this is the trap sometimes. Being a trucker, you're making all this money while you're driving on the road, but then you don't get the downtime. You don't get the time to enjoy the money. And then there's always some kind of breakdown and issue with these trucks. Let me tell you, y'all saw my stories today on Instagram, towing them trucks. <laughs> y'all cracking me up. Uh, yes, out, the the cartels are selling avocados. Why? Because when Trump was in, we had a ban going on. It was ridiculous. College can still be great. I think a lot of people just, they go and then they spend six, seven, eight years there. That's not how it's supposed to go. It's really not. You're supposed to be, you kind of in that thing for three years and, and going about the day. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean? Talk more. Explain what you're talking about. There I'm saying, Rashad Bart, why why live in your van, pee in, in, in a cup in your van when you can go be a trucker? Nick Taylor, that's my new name for him, Chili Bean Society. I don't want to say no names no more because y'all act like, you, you're talking bad about people. Okay, well, Chili Bean Society then. That's what they'll be today, the Chili Bean Society. Is the housing market going to change soon? Well, you'll have some markets change, not all. Uh, if you go look up, there's an article from 2016. I'll actually pull it up real quick. Oh, shit, we're going on an hour. Got to wrap it up, but let me pull it up. This article is still good to this day and worth using because it'll tell you Forbes Boomtown list article. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right. Let me see. It's like this article is more than five years old. Yes, it is, but it still is perfect. It is a perfect article. Because it lists the cities that I've told y'all about a bajillion times. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm going to share my screen. Give me a second. Okay. Because we all know this is true now. See, this, this when they first wrote the article, they were speculating, right? Now we know it's true. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is America's Next Boomtowns. Uh, I'm gonna kind of skim over this and just and tell you like if if you ask me about the housing market in these towns, you're straight because it's just gonna be stay expensive. It's gonna stay hella expensive. Okay, so again, the Lone Star. You have all four major Texas metros top of the list: Austin, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio. And this was from 2010 to 2014, double digit job growth, eight percent natural average. And this was 2016 article, y'all. Okay. All right. Austin, of course, ranked number one, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now we're going to go over to the flyover states. Salt Lake City, Utah, Denver was number four. I think Denver, if I can do a whole video on Denver, Denver peaked in 2016. Everything, all the data on Denver is like going down at this point. Like it's, uh, their housing is going to take a, they're, they're like at a 30% crash in like uh, parts of Colorado because of water, water restriction and they can't finish building. So it's pretty bad. Um, the Southeast, again, Raleigh, like Austin, Texas is a tech hot spot. Again, only place I can see myself moving if something push come to shove and I had to leave Texas is Nashville, Tennessee, 
Raleigh, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. That's it. Like I wouldn't be in Florida. I wouldn't be in Virginia. I, I would pretty much can see myself living in those cities and nothing about my life would really change. I would still be doing computer stuff. I'd still have investments. I still try to build a house or two real estate, try to invest in Detroit and different cities, really Cleveland at this point. But yeah, again, here's this, the glorious gated community, San Jose and San Francisco. Now, this is what's so funny about this. San Francisco fell off this list. So out of all the boom towns, San Francisco lost its footing, right? Uh, what's the next one? Seattle's on this list, which it went up, right? They call it the fading big enchiladas. And this this article, y'all, I keep telling y'all, this article was life-changing for me because every place they name had already been booming. And the places they talk about that are falling down we know now this is true, right? What are the big enchiladas? New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. Let me say that again. New York, Chicago, and uh, Los Angeles, right? And employment, housing, all these things were falling out of those ones. Chicago ranked number 40th, appears to have the worst prospects for all its problems. Los Angeles still dominates entertainment. Okay, what happened in 2020? No entertainment. Has the largest part of the country. It enjoys the finest weather on the continent. Chicago has none of those advantages, and it boasts very attractive downtown. Again, like this article, if you go and read this on your own time, like this was one of the best articles. It picked out the best cities. It made the most sense. Um, it clicked view all, right? So it was, again, number one was Austin, Texas. We're still number one. Number two is Salt Lake City, Utah. Number three, San Jose, California, Denver, Colorado. Raleigh, North Carolina, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas. I got to tell Tim Jackson this. San Antonio, Texas, San Francisco, which absolutely decimated, fell off the list. Oklahoma City, Nashville, Tennessee. We knew that was working. Charlotte, North Carolina, baby. Minneapolis, Minnesota. I don't know why. It's whack up there. I saw it. Columbus, Ohio. We've seen that. And Seattle, Washington. These are the cities of the future. Future, y'all. Okay. Yeah, micro stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How are you students are doing a sit-in because the dorms are full of mold, broken pipes, torn furniture, and stained walls. So students are sleeping in bad living conditions. Very true. What advice would I give for a teen? It depends on the teen. I would say read, read, read. I would say get some certifications and get out there and get some part-time tech jobs. That'll be your easiest. If you can learn marketing, sales, social media management, for business owners that are like me or people older than me that are like 50 years old and like, I don't know about Facebook. I don't know about any of that. You'll be doing fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's the article. That's the article. People should have saved their money since 2008 recession. Man, people ain't people aren't going to hear that. <laughs> JC, I cannot read that. I cannot read that. There you go. Nick Taylor even said it. My truck in the driveway now, every door unlocked, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. See, that's the difference. There you go. Never leave your stuff. You can go to Japan right now, go to the bathroom, pee, and come back five minutes later, and your stuff's going to be there. Now, in Korea, maybe not. My friend got pickpotting in Korea, so. You know, not as much, but yeah. This is still the comment of the day, y'all. <laughs> Ron, listen, Mr. Shepard is doing exactly what I recommend for people. Go to conferences, go to seminars, improve yourself, work out, live a great life, invest, and give back to others. A pillar, pillar of one of my students. You don't, Mallory J. You have to really go back and listen to the video. You really don't. Many people are wigging out about this, but it's not its not enforced enough. I know. And that's why I laugh about this. They're like, oh, that's just Instagram. No, you just are. You just associate yourself with people who are not getting married. Stop it. What's up, no name? Congratulations. Signed up today. That's what you do. Mommy blog. Yeah. States receive millions in rental assistance. Many people didn't receive any money. The greed is real. Make your money. Keep your gun by your side. Now, this is what's going to happen. I've told you all this in previous videos. 
There's 624 people here. Hit the like button. If you don't super chat, if you don't cash app, that's fine. But at least hit the like button. I'm not asking for a lot. What's going to happen is a lot of these homeowners and these landlords, we're going to receive money next year. I really have a strong feeling what's going to happen is I'm going to look up in May and they go, hey, whoops, we saw where one of your tenants applied and here's the rental assistance. And we're going to be like, they already got put out. But the government's going to be like, but we gave you the money. Why'd you, what happened? So, you know, that's just is what it is. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be very delayed. They really were. They really were. They were giving them one way tickets. Get on out of here. Get yourself out of here tickets. When you see me on there, what was I doing? Was I talking about tech jobs? So, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I mean, they can't take it. I try to make the show engaging and people just every day cry about something. Shut up. Good gracious. <laughs> there you go. I hear about it all the time. Houses in Bowie, Maryland. I remember driving by through there. Big house, but unfurnished and desperate cash circumstances. Um, there's an article, if you look up about Maryland, PG County, how in 2008, they had all these foreclosures, but the families never left. Like there are families still living five, six, seven years later in these houses. Now, here's my only problem. The families were living in the houses, but their financial situation wasn't getting better. It's not like the husband got a new job. The wife got a new job. It was like they were still in the same bad conditions in the article. And I'm like, what is going on? Right. Like, come on now. Like if you know you already foreclosed on, you ain't paid no rent in two years, three years. Y'all should be doing. I mean, like two, three years is the time to turn it around. There you go. Listen, mortgage, mortgage signings, people getting in them houses. Junior James, I'm sorry, you got the cash app that. That's too much. Too much. Y'all make me want to think we're all this stuff for free now. Nah. Yep, thank you. 100K, th there you go. Y'all, li listen, ask people in California and New York what 100K is. See, but this is silly. See, JC, I don't want to embarrass you right now. I really don't. I thank you for your comment, first of all. Thank you. There are so many Democrats in the House, in the Senate, you don't need Republicans to vote on any bill. Let me be very clear. The Democrats are in a majority in the House. They're in a majority in the Senate. You don't need any Republican, like you don't even need one Republican to vote. Any bill that needs to be passed by Democrats can go right now. This is where we get into this laws of 48 power is the current book we're on for class. It's the laws of human nature. Excuse me. We get so focused on, well, Democrats and the Republicans and the Democrats. And it don't matter. The House is full of, you got a Democrat president, you got a Democratic House, you got a Democratic Senate. There's no excuse for why we can't get reparations. They just don't want to do it. Can't, there's no reason why these bills haven't been passed. They don't want to do it. There's no reason why Nancy Pelosi can't hold it tomorrow or the vote tomorrow and all the Democrats vote and say, well, I don't care what y'all want. Same thing happened in California. The reason it made no sense to have a Republican governor, like when they had when Arnold Schwarzenegger was in there, is you have 75 percent Democrats. They don't need a Republican in California to do anything. They can just keep voting craziness and voting themselves into oblivion. That's why right now I keep talking about winter is coming because California just banned lawnmowers. Uh, gas generators, several key items to make businesses run. You able to cut your own grass? Well, now, well, now you got to all run out and do what? Buy an electric lawnmower, buy an old school lawnmower, all this silly stuff. You don't need, let go of the right and left bull crap. Let it go. I know everybody thinks I'm their favorite conservative, but really I'm a libertarian. I know the BS. Let business owners run free and it'll be better for everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, my listen. She just said my three friends made 20k driving Uber from June to September. There you go. There you go. Cash out refi still getting done. There's no reason to struggle this winter. There you go. I live in California. Woo! Inflation ain't no joke. California ain't no joke. 
Um, again, if you guys in the comments, what's the source? What's the source? Get your lazy ass on this computer. Say Google. Go let me show you how to do it. Let me show you. Let me show you right now. I'm gonna show y'all right now. We're gonna do this live. Oh my God, it's gonna be revolutionary. You're gonna be like, oh my God. How many people get shot by the police a year? Oh my, oh my God. Oh, oh my God, look, look, look. This is a, this is a website. S T A. T I S T A dot com. It's it, all it does is have stats. That's all it does is have stats. Okay. Okay. Ready? Are you ready? In 2020, there was a thousand twenty one fatal shootings. Okay. Just, just that year alone. Just that year alone. Okay. Now, if you go here, if you look here, see here. Can you see right here? It'll give you every year. Okay. Now, y'all being like Erica, don't be a bitch. But here, I have to be because. Because common sense says, instead of asking me for a source right in the middle of a damn live show, I'm going to go to my phone and I'm going to check that stat <gasps> for free, for free. And yes, feel free to call me a B. I don't care. <laughs> like once you realize that, like you get to a point where you're going to make money regardless off this Internet, off this man's Internet and other digital real estate assets, and you can go invest in other stuff. You don't care. You don't out here shucking and jiving for people to like you. Uh, but I'll just go there. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Jerry Perar, for the $10 kid super chat. Okay. He said, Ansadoto, please listening to your show changed my career twice since Corona layoff. I started a business and need a book of consultation. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. People stop worrying about Halloween costumes. You better get some damn money. <laughs> Dr. Dix coming in as he does. As he does being Dr. Dix. Who else needs a timeout? Let me know. There you go. Nick Taylor says, I wish I could, but I can't. The youth don't want to learn and most don't respect authority and I'm a full blown authoritarian. Listen, any man that I've met, black man or white man from the military years, they don't, um, they don't. You know, they don't, they don't play that. Oh, Lord, not bust out windows. I bust out windows out your car. All the festivals. Yeah, all the festivals are full and sold out. This, thank you, Billy. Tell them this country was built on people who never went to college. The White House was built by people who were slaves. Ooh, ooh, that's it. Listen, that's a whole nother show. You guys, let me screenshot this. Let me take a picture of this. Mm -mm -mm. Let me take a picture of this. Because I this is this is one of those go down the rabbit hole. Okay. Question for you. Will blacks become obsolete? I see your markets of interest being infringed by other groups. What happens when we are no longer needed? I'm long short answer. Long answer short, and then we'll do this for another video. I'll see if LAR Movement wants to do this video. We are consumer class. That's all we are at this point. Like, we buy hair, makeup. We buy everything from everybody else. We don't produce much of our own stuff. So we're already there. Like, we still make money for groups, so we'll, be, we'll still be important. There you go. This is true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Vegas, that's, uh, that's too much. That's too long. Vegas. I believe it. <laughs> I can't. I can't with you guys today. Let me see what else we got in here before we leave. California. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Famos is up to you. Depends on the city and state you're in, really, honestly. Um, yes, there is a report that says that, but it also says Latinos too. But you have to read the report from an ass again. We talk about asset supremacy. And I'll do a whole other video talking about why it says that. We don't own our homes. 
We don't own our, we own cars, but we don't own our homes. We don't have life insurance policies. We don't have stocks. These are the metrics that count wealth. So if they, if they interview you and you say, well, I'm a renter. Well, do you own your own car? Yes. Okay. What else? Do you have stocks? No. Do you have life insurance? No. Do you have a 401k? No. Well then guess what? On the paper, you're a zero. That's all. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I'm just saying what I say. I say what I say. They've never had a lot of money. They've never had it. Joe Biden said it's gone. People will always spend their money on that stuff. Again, look up Forbes Boomtown article 2016. 16 Boomtowns. It's it's possible, but it'll be in layers. Listen, if you live in this category right here, this 40,000 and under, and you live in the hood, yeah, the purge is for your town. I'm going to be over here in my gated community in Georgetown looking at y'all like, I don't know why y'all down there. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling the truth. Like, that sounds horrible, but like, that's why gated communities and master plan communities are being built so crazy. You're going to start having, you're going to start having school teachers that live in the master plan community, teach at the master plan school, right? Hit the fan, they still going to school. What happened this last pandemic? Several of these master plan communities overvoted, overruled the local, the state, the local in the city and said, no, nah, our kids are going to keep going. Y'all, y'all missed that. The Jewish community in New York said, F New York. I wish they would come over here, voted to send their kids to school and all their kids went to school. New York, New York Jewish Student Society did not stop going to school, did not stop going to work. Oh, yeah. I only quit because they tried to make me come back in office. Ah, this is. <clears throat> yep. Yep. OK. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, this is the thing. It's not about being a damsel in distress, right? I'm a complete believer in gender roles. But what you're going to have is you have too many women, way too many who are like, well, I'm waiting until I get a husband, girl. I'm waiting until I, and then they don't never pay. They, they don't get no degrees. They don't improve their job situation. They don't buy a house. There's that girl that went viral. I'm not picking on her, but she's, she's, you know, she's an average looking chick. Nothing wrong with that. She was in California complaining that she doesn't have pretty privilege. Well, baby, it's California. Like all these tens move there. Like you need to move to Mississippi, Alabama, somewhere. I don't know, right? And so she moved back to Houston because she realized, okay, I'm not gonna be able to have children. I'm about to be 40, and I'm in this low-paying job. And this whole time I was in California, I was waiting for a husband to buy a house and move on with my life. You got a lot of women in that category where they waited and waited and waited, and they got a. So now you got these people who played this damsel in distress and there was no men there was no men wanting that wanted that salad for whatever reason they didn't want it they didn't want that plate they're like no thank you and now you got these women that are going to be late 30s mid 40s roommates go don't take my word on it go look up craigslist <laughs> careful with the craigslist right now go look up craigslist go look up roommate websites there are a ton of them people living with strangers cuz it's cuz they they have to OK, they financially have to. So that's why we say, oh, these people ain't getting married. These men, folk, they will move in. They, listen, what is the whole uh, homosexual? Why is it such a big movement? Because there's so many men who are like, damn, I need somewhere to stay. <laughs> I can't stay at my grandma's. I can't stay at my mama's house. I got to have somewhere to stay. And it's a running joke. But these guys aren't all bums. Some of these guys have jobs. They just don't make enough money. They went and got a Camaro. And they work on the abs every day, but they only make 30 gay a year, so they ain't got enough money. Okay? Just, I'm just I just wanna just wanna go there. I just wanna go there. I just wanna go there. Look at this. I love the content, but please humble yourself. Oh, oh, Mr. Thomas, I apologize. First of all, let me invite you to the ministry. 
thank you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. But I, I, I sent you to the ministry. I sent you to the ministry, okay? The block ministry. Anytime someone says humble yourself, to who? I humble myself to God. Yes. Not to you. That's crazy. Come on now. Again, again, you don't understand what you're saying. We're not even capitalists. We're crony capitalism slash socialism in America. We've been that way for 20 years. So again, I mean, again, um, I'll just go there. Let me see what else we got in here. <laughs> That's what they do. That's what they do. It just is. I don't even know this man. Like, if you like the content, just like the content. If you don't like it, be quiet. You know, you can leave. You don't have to be here. You don't have to be here. There's 30 million YouTube channels. Damn, I'm waiting to get a husband and you don't have to have a secure income. Lord, I'm 40 with a great husband. Prior to marriage, I made my condo. I am telling y'all, there are women, countless, if you read articles, blogs, all these people, they be all here like, oh, yeah, I waited all this time and now I'm 40. And you're like, okay, okay well, you know, okay, if you say so, baby, that's not going to work. Uh, the course is live, but the replays will be inside the course. And also there's 20 recordings going in the course. <laughs> I mean, listen, it is what it is. It's very sad. Her mindset is sad. I've told y'all that before when I watched it. Average women do get married in Cali. Just it's not this one. Just not this one. So long and the story short, like, you know, at the end of the day, I am acting up. I need to calm down. Um, what I want you to understand is a lot of this is mindset. Okay. A, a lot of this is... Um, <laughs> Oh, credit solution is right. Um, don't don't do her like that, <laughs> right? Um, a lot of this is mindset. A lot of this stuff is mindset, y'all. Okay. Um, let me see here. Thank you for the cash app here. We got a cat, couple cash apps from Shakrisha Bennett. Thank you for the ten dollar cash app. Thank you, Royston Gibbs, for the fifty dollar cash app. Love you. Get your course soon. Thank you. Master IT, thank you for the $5 cash app. Thank you, Lucifer. Is that Lucifer? The hell? Oh, no, it's Christian. It's just that he spelled it funny. Thank you for the $25 cash app. Okay. I appreciate all of y'all. appreciate every dollar, every dollar, every dime, baby. Okay. Let me see. Um, okay, what else? That's it? I think we got it all. I'm just going to tell you like this. This is... <laughs> Uh, they love the word. They love it. Humble yourself. I only humble myself at the gym because the gym be beating me the hell up. Okay. Now look. Okay. Love y'all. Y'all been great. I'm just going to tell you your heating bill is going to go up. Okay. Your food bill is going to go up. Uh, you, you buy wood, chop wood. It's going to go up. Okay. You see all these people getting solar panels. We're in a fourth turn. You've got a lot of people going to get into repair. Okay, gonna need it for repairs. Okay, all right. A lot of stuff is going to be expensive. Again, micro trips, these cars, toilet tissue, toys for children. Y'all saw that one ship flipped over, right? Them containers went into the sea. They gone. Okay, you can't get them out of there. Okay, so I'm teaching the class digital real estate coins. I'm doing seven live trainings because in the class, I'm gonna tell you these are the. This is what you need to make an economic moat. Pay attention to who I keep bringing on the channel doing interviews with. Everybody's like, oh, man, you keep talking about Tech, tech Tuesday. I bring on various tech people doing various tech things. There's a reason I'm showing y'all this stuff. I don't want to hear from you in March talking about how crazy it is. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to be overseas. I'm going to be in Croatia. I'm going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about over there. Happy birthday to me. I'm going to be gone. Okay? There will be segments and parts of our society that will keep on going about their day. You better get in where you fit in. 
these 10,000 John Deere workers that walked off the job, they'll be back. They, they, they on day two. And some of them at home like, whew, Lord, please let them agree to give us two more dollars. Please. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. All right. Oh, thank you so much for love for the East Coast. I appreciate it. Kevin, Dave, they, they, they tell me every day. They tell me, well, if you just, if you wear brighter colors, you wear black too often. I've heard people say all kind of stuff in the comments. It's wild. It's wild. You got to transform your mind. Kamoi's class is great. There you go. It's inside the course. Thank you. I appreciate you. Get gas as high as hell. Okay. All right, everybody. So listen, pay attention. <laughs> get them wool socks. Okay. <laughs> get your wool socks. Get your wool clothes. Okay. Get yourself ready now. I just, I done told y'all what you're going to do. You either going to make some more money or you're going <laughs> to, you're going to be having to get adjusted. To live in a little bit lower. So anyway, you guys, this is your girl Erica from the Classy Klein blog. Thank you so much for being here tonight. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for people who bought the course. I'll see you in class tomorrow. Go inside the course. Log in. The link for the course live training is in there. Click on that link. Get up in there. Don't be late. See you tomorrow. All right, you guys. Have a great night.